Hi there. Hope you're having a lovely day so far. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of adrenal fatigue before? Well, this actually happens when our adrenal glands become so overworked from chronic stress that um, our body can no longer produce the essential hormones um, and many of our um, bodily functions become um, sort of overworked and compromised. Now, the stay-at-home era that we're living living through at the moment for all its wonderful benefits um, of having us supposedly slow down a little and not running around as much has in fact increased workloads, pressures and stresses to many households, which is something that the media are not really talking about much at the moment. So we're here today to help show our support and share with you some expert tips uh, to help prevent or overcome burnout whilst home in isolation. And to talk to us um, about this today is our special guest, Chrissy Regan. Now, Chrissy is founder of Mindful Mums Queensland and the author of the new book, Broken to Unbreakable, 12 Steps to Unbreakable Mind body and spirit. Now, uh, Chrissy will chat to us about numerous natural and proven stress busting techniques that uh, you can try to reduce or even prevent burnout um, from occurring. Now, thank you so much for joining us today, Chrissy. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm great. Thank you. Now, you're uh, a very busy lady. You're a mother of two kids. Um, you're juggling the demands of a household, as well as being a businesswoman where you're the global projects director for a UK firm and, um, and you manage and oversees overseas projects in Europe and UK, Africa, and all from your home office here in Australia. So um, that being said, you've actually suffered from um, and overcome from burnout before. So can you tell us what was your experience with this and how did you recognize and then overcome it? Well, it's fair to say that burnout manifests differently for different people, but I think my symptoms were quite classic. Um, um, exhausted but unable to sleep, um, feeling overwhelmed and stressed and living in constant state of flight or fight, um, having a mindset of time scarcity where there was a never enough um, hours in the day to get things done. And that is kind of the mental side of burnout. The physical side of burnout is aches and pains, slow digestion, congested model skin, poor functioning liver. Um, I had plantar fasciitis, backache, all of these um, symptoms which need to be looked at with a very holistic eye because if you present to a, a GP with any one of those symptoms, you might get given a painkiller or an antidepressant or something, but actually they're an overarching um, um, symptoms that lead to or actually mask um, adrenal fatigue and, and indeed adrenal burnout. And I have read articles myself where it's one of the most underdiagnosed conditions that actually exists because there's no one test to, um, to pinpoint it exactly. But I did a lot of research myself. Um, I recognized that I was suffering uh, with all of those conditions and I wanted to do something about it and so I um, started researching all my symptoms individually and then things fell into place and I recognized that um, as a high performing high um, busy person I had been suffering and I had burnt out my body as well as my my mind and um, indeed my emotional side of my life so I kind of um, I hit the wall as it were. So, so what you're saying, there is a list of different things that actually constitute of um, suffering from burnout. It's not just one particular thing. And it's the mm -hmm. process of connecting all of those dots and understanding they're not isolated so much. They're actually um, all together. They do actually constitute you being burnt out. Um, is that what you're saying? Yeah, correct. You know, it's a, it's a holistic condition and a lot of autoimmune um, illnesses are, you know, conditions that affect a multitude of um, different areas of our body. Um, you know, even through weak hair and, and congested skin, you would just think, oh, well, I'm having a breakout or my hair's feeling really weak or I've just had a baby and I'm breastfeeding and all my hair's falling out. But actually these um, are symptomatic of a much bigger underlying condition, which is caused by stress um, and overwork and lack of self-care and um, uh, lack of sleep. 
but over time it can manifest and indeed cause you know kind of more chronic illnesses because once your adrenal glands are burnt out your body doesn't function in an optimal way which is mm -hmm. what i found and previously you've studied um, exercise science and sport, sports management, and you've spent um, the last 20 years managing projects for clients all around the world. Um, so I'd love to know in your experience, have you ever noticed a common theme or thread with the types of people that suffer from burnout? I think it's um, people with a very giving nature where you're used to giving and giving to others and not necessarily looking or going inward and giving to yourself. Um, I would say a lot of high performing people who are working, you know, really hard or for long periods of time who aren't necessarily so introspective, they're more kind of outward looking. Um, so I think I found myself kind of in that um, headspace. Also probably people who aren't necessarily have the skills or the understanding to manage their thoughts and emotions. And I found myself probably in that bracket where I would let my thoughts and emotions control me as opposed to me controlling my thoughts and emotions. And, you know, often it's that classic symptoms of, you know, being busy is a badge of honor, working hard, you know, is kind of your motto and, 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 meeting other people's needs becomes your measure of self-worth and self-value. And that kind of impacts a lot on how you care for yourself and what measures you put in place to kind of look after yourself. And um, over, I'd say more than a decade, I had let a lot of those areas slip in my life where I was more focused on others than I was on myself. Mm. In your opinion, like, why do you think so many people suffer from burnout? Well, we live a 24 seven life and it's a very, uh, we live at a relatively phonetic pace. I think the switching off the busyness is a real skill and having the mindset of resisting the urge to get busy and to take on more things is something that we can all kind of learn and adopt. And it's something that COVID has taught us to actually just stop um, and, you know, to focus on what's around us as most important. Um, and also to prioritize our health and well-being and we don't actually do that you know in society today it's not necessarily talked about enough prioritizing your own health and well-being and, and also being accountable for your health and well-being we like to outsource everything in this day and age so we need to kind of bring it back to home mm. <clears throat> now I've personally suffered from burnout uh, many times, um, far too many times um, than I would like to ad admit. And I can, I can say from personal experience, it's not nice and it's pretty scary actually. Um, yeah. And disappointing mainly because I, for so many times didn't listen to my body um, and didn't take any notice of the, the, the warning signs um, that my body was giving me. Um, and I guess the lesson here for everyone listening is the fact that burnout is preventable, um, but you have to know um, what the signs are and uh, what to do about them. So the question um, really is, what are the common signs of burnout um, that a parent, say home in isolation, um, may be feeling at the moment? And really what should they do to over overcome all of those things. Mm -hmm. Well, I expect there's a lot of parents burning the midnight oil at the moment and feeling stressed about life and the situations that they can't control because there's a lot more pressures in the home environment. So managing stress is one important um, element of, of um, preventing burnout, stress management, good practices in stress management, which is not overthinking, not ruminating, not getting caught up in... Um, you know, in thinking about negative thoughts or, or and being grateful for what we have, which is spending time with our kids and with our families, and to focus on the positives as opposed to, you know, absorbing all the negativity and the, um, the stress and the anguish that's going on in the world right now. You need to kind of create a little bit of a protective bubble around you and to really kind of like focus on the health and wellness in your immediate circle. Mm hmm you know, and I guess um, going back to what you were saying before, like when we are stressed, um, our immune system really does take a hit um, because it, it, um, the stress lowers our natural immunity. Um, so in saying that, given the time of year um, with winter just around the corner, I guess a lot of parents um, who are um, experiencing or approaching burnout at the moment um, you know, juggling all of those different things at the moment with homeschooling and 
um, you know, um, all of the, the things around the, ha the household, maybe, you know, multiple children, a multi-generational household that they actually have their, their, their parents and grandparents in the house, all different things and the stresses potentially even with job losses and all kinds of things at the moment. There's a whole multitude of stresses that we um, are living through at the moment. Um, and um, so burnout also doesn't necessarily mean that it's just because if you're not working, there's different things happening around the household, let's face it, at the moment. So in yeah. saying that, with people people experiencing or approaching burnout um, and approaching winter, they may end up getting sick, I guess, at the worst possible time at, um, with mm. cold and flus. And of course, um, God forbid, any potential exposure to COVID-19. And I, I know myself and everyone knows um, that when you are more run down and then when you do get a cold flu or some other bug, that it takes so much um, more effort and it's harder to, to actually have your body recuperate and get back to a place of being in optimum um, health. So for many parents, um, you know, we know also that they don't have the time to be sick um, and they just keep dragging themselves um, sort of through this situation and those, those yeah. times when they should be in bed and resting, um, that they mm. drag themselves out of bed. Um, but if we continue to push through life in this perpetual um, fight or flight type of scenario, um, our body's ev eventually going to crash and burn, I guess. So what are your thoughts mm. on all of that, I guess? Since before COVID really kicked off, my philosophy has been to um, focus on building your immunity. So to build your immunity, you can prioritise sleep, try to minimise stress and to you know, improve the quality of um, the food that you're using to nourish your body, but yeah. also to exercise because through exercising, we are stressing our bodies and creating new cells. So when we create new cells, we build new immunity um, and resistance. So, you know, those are kind of simple things. Not only are they good for self-care, but they're also very good for building immunity and having those conversations with your family around the dinner time and a dinner table and or at the start of each week. You know, and I developed this, what I like to call my little um, wellness mindset checklist, <laughs> because if you, do, if you have a wellness mindset as you're going into the week or even going into the day, you can kind of mentally check yourself. Is this within the best interests of my health and well-being? Have I prioritized my sleep today? Have I prioritized nourishing my body? Am I getting rest and exercise? And am I kind of looking out for myself? And when you start to kind of show up for yourself in an accountable way on a daily basis, that in itself builds your immune system. And even the simple act of being grateful builds your immune system. So, you know, saying some gratitude prayers at night or even saying grace at the table with your family or sitting down at the end of the day and making a note of what you've been what you're thankful for will indeed also build your immune system so it's not just things on a, um, a physical level or a nutritional level it's also on a mental and a spiritual level that we can raise our immune system I love that, a wellness mindset. And I think that we are so, <laughs> um, as you said earlier on about the, the badge of honour and, and um, accepting um, of, of life being busy um, all the time, that we actually put everything else before, um, you know, our wellness and, and um, that that I guess um, aspect of actually putting ourselves first it's always you know our jobs our um the money the stress um and everything else yeah. that that supports it but at the end of the day yeah. you know what we think about we bring about and that, that that can be good and bad but I think that's very a very important message that you're giving us that we actually need to be able to have a strong focus on that being I guess our number one priority for our family and for ourselves that that yeah. um if, if we aren't sort of strong in our mind mind body and spirit what do we have at the end of the day yes. so i think having a wellness mindset is a very very powerful message so thank you for sharing that with us and that's something that i'm definitely going to be taking away and, and implementing into my life um, following this chat today now we published your article and the title is self-care tips to prevent burnout perfect for yes. what we're talking about today so for <laughs> someone who hasn't read the article before can you please give us an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it well, I have worked from home for a long period of time whilst raising small kids. So it's not unusual for me to kind of manage the um, conflicting demands of home and, and small kids. Um, and I, and in the meantime, I developed and suffered quite severely from burnout. So I really wanted to share the learnings that I had with, um, with your readers and with the people who um, follow Kidipedia to help kind of um, 
share some very basic tips and insights into how to think, think of reframe the situation, look at things from a, another angle, develop some simple rituals and practices that you can build into your day, which will enable you to kind of, um, uh, let's say, counterbalance some of that um, stress and anxiety and overwhelm that would be, you know, coming through. And as I said earlier, burnout does manifest in many different ways. And if you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you can be walking towards burnout. If you're starting to feel physically exhausted or you know, on your way to chronic fatigue, you can kind of catch those things before they become too severe. Because unfortunately, once you've gone into the severe end of adrenal burnout or chronic fatigue, the time to recover is very, very long. And not only that, you have damaged your body for a relatively long period of time, thereby increasing your risk of getting other chronic illnesses and, and such as cancer, etc. So, you know, I really want, I'm passionate about that message is to prioritize your health and well-being above all else to enable you to live a healthier, longer, happier life for not just for yourself, but for your children as well. Now, so the things that you've spoken about before about your experience, is that what inspired you to write your book, Broken to Unbreakable? Um, and yes, I've, yeah, I'd love to know. Um, so I did hit the wall massively and I wrote down my 12 steps to an unbreakable mind, body and spirit. And I followed those 12 steps and I've transformed my own health. And um, in transforming my own health, I felt inspired and more connected uh, to the world around me and a much, you know, a healthier mindset came along with that. So you know, I feel like I have um, gone from broken to unbreakable and that now I have the tools and the resources and the physical health to kind of weather any storm that kind of comes up in my life. And it's not to say that um, you won't still be challenged or you won't still feel stress from time to time or you won't still come up with, um, you know, a, a cold and flu, but you actually then have more coping resources and, and mechanisms around you to kind of deal with that. And the, I feel there's a lot of strong messages throughout the book that will help people, but all on a mental, physical and spiritual level to kind of reconnect what's most, most important in their life, which is what I did, which ultimately transformed my health. And do you think it starts with people actually just being honest about how they're feeling to them, just to themselves, not to anyone else? I mean, you've got to be honest with yourself about how you're feeling and just going back mm. to what we were saying before about um, wearing the badge of honour and, and being busy and everyone likes to be able to be busy. Um, but it's, 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 it can be quite confronting sometimes to actually to sit and have that moment to yourself to actually be honest and say, I'm actually feeling this. Um, so mm -hmm. does the book um, and your tips sort of help you sort of work through that um, initially and or, and or not? I don't know. Yes, because the introduction on the book in, in the book talks about that quite a lot before we go into the 12 steps, because I really want people to understand that, um, uh, we're all responsible for ourselves and self is, in my view, sensible expectations last forever. That's my definition of the word self. And if we're accountable and we show up for ourselves in the right way and we assume total accountability for our health and well-being, you're then going to start making the decisions which are, are right for you, but also enable you to, um, um, to live healthier because what you don't want to do is to fall into the to the trap of making all the unhealthy and bad choices, you know, in your, in the years when you can be um, positively influencing yourself and found that you've caused long-term detrimental effect to your health and well-being. So it really starts, you know, with yourself and making the decision. And ultimately all I did was decide I want to get healthy. And when I made the decision, I want to get healthy. And I wrote down those 12 steps, everything else fell into place because I had made the decision and, you know, and it's not a boot camp and it's not a detox and it's not, um, you know, 12 minutes to run five kilometers. It's not like that. It's actually much going in more spiritual side and asking yourself those difficult questions and then being accountable for the answers. Why am I feeling like this? What do I want to get out of this? What's important to me? How do I? Yourself of actually asking yourself those questions and being yeah. honest with yourself. 
And I, I prompt a lot of the questions in the book to kind of help guide people on the process, because if you've never kind of done that self-reflection before, you can find that challenging. And I probably did as well. Um, and it was really through my own reading and learning that I was able to start kind of, and I'm a relatively curious person to start asking myself those really hard questions. And I know to admit and that I had worn exhaustion as a badge of honor worn being busy as a badge of honour and almost worn my burnout as a badge of honour and I didn't want to carry those badges anymore. I wanted to have a whole fresh new slate. So that's where it came about. Well, with that message then and with um, so many families um, home in isolation, how can we encourage um, mums, dads, um, carers um, to prioritise their self-care at the moment? It is a really good question. And, and I like to think that everybody's self-care routine is slightly different based on their circumstances. And, and often I think self-care is a broad term that um, fundamentally people may not know how to execute on a very practical level. So it's about looking at what are the things that cause you to feel exhausted and those that cause you to feel fulfilled. And I mentioned about um, the concept of sustainers and drainers. So looking at what sustains you, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, looking at what drains you physically, emotionally, and mentally. And for some people, hanging out the washing is quite draining, whereas for other people, watering the lawn is quite sustaining. So <laughs> it's really about looking at, you know, little things like that that you're having to deal with in the home at the moment. And I just draw a simple table with the two columns, sustainers on one side, drainers on the other. And I write down what sustains me. And on the other side, I write down what drains me. Now, often what happens is when we get very busy and very stressed is our sustainers quickly get dropped. <laughs> and we then, we're then we then just left with our drainers. And that's kind of really, really common. So, you know, even simple things like I developed this little list, which is called 10 Tips for Self-Care in 10 Minutes. Yeah. Because um, it's not difficult to do self-care in 10-minute intervals. And if you had... 10 lots of 10 minutes throughout the day on accumulatively, you would end up with 100 minutes of self-care a day, which is an amazing thing to aspire to. Yep. But to do it really simply, you can go, well, herbal tea o'clock, that's 10 minutes. Fruit, fruit o'clock of having a fruit snack. Nature <laughs> o'clock, sitting or walking outside. You know, inspire o'clock, sharing your favourite quote, song or poem. You know, so you can see where I'm going with this, you know, stretching and being calm and just having, you know, these 10 minute intervals punctuated throughout your day so that by the end of the day, you have given yourself, you know, moments of self-care and you're not saving it all up for the end of the week or the end of the night when the kids are in bed. You kind of need to recognize and punctuate and notice throughout the day how you're feeling and checking in with yourself. So that would be a really good thing to print off and put on the fridge or something like that, because I think when we constantly see those messages, it's like, um, and or other family members can help you sort of make you accountable. Because sometimes with uh, when you are, you've got a lot, a lot of conflicting priorities happening, unless you actually make the time for those types of um, self-care or anything in our, in our life, we actually have to block out that time. So I think it's... Um, that, that would be really quite useful and I'd love to be able to have a link or something like that in the show notes to it actually yes. which would be just fantastic yes I'd love to and number seven is inspired by my daughter who wants to do dance battles every day so <laughs> number seven is dance and hug a clock because when we hug people we release oxytocin which is good for our body and when we dance we exercise and we have fun so you know it's little things like that that you can do and get the kids involved and you know these are fun things that we can do um, I was homeschooled for six years um, of my life from year one to year six by two busy working parents. And, um, you know, I learned all life skills, how to milk cows and how to bake and how to, you know, sew and how to do all these things, which are kind of, you know, lost in a lot of generations today. And I think it's really important at the moment to kind of go back to that more basic holistic way of living and looking at, okay, well, what are we doing on a daily basis that, you know, is something that we can pass on to our kids or something that we can reflect on and share that was special to us as we were growing up. And I've certainly been trying to do that with my girls whilst we've been home and making up, you know, games that I love to play hide and seek in the house when I was a kid. So we've been playing a lot of hide and seek in the house, but yes, it is a good time as well. Well, that is something that we're speaking to a lot of the experts about and they have been saying also, you know, during this time that um, if, 
parents are concerned about their children not learning academically. It's, it's about understanding and seeing while there are lessons in every moment um, of our lives that parents um, and carers and grandparents can be, um, you know, um, providing children to understand the, the lesson of resilience, the, le the lesson of patience um, and everything else that you, you mentioned as well. So it's not necessarily just learning academically is the only um, education that children have, you know. Um, so I think that's a really valid point what you were saying before is just um, to open our eyes and think laterally and really just put that lens of perspective of, um, you know, there's so many things that, that um, parents can be teaching their kids at this time. Um, um, and the lesson of values and all those kinds of things as well. So, and you've given us some really wonderful information today. If you were to summarize, I guess, your key messages for any listener, what would they be? Well, fundamentally, um, prioritizing our health and wellness is the most important thing in the world as far as um, is I'm concerned. And recognizing if you're not feeling healthy or well, it's important now to kind of take some steps to rectify that while you can. You know, we have this break in our frenetic pace in order to kind of do a little bit of internal reflection as well as maybe um, do emotional deep dive and, and look at really where you are in your life. To, prior to develop a wellness mindset if you don't already have one and to think, how am I going to nourish my body? How am I going to take care of myself? How am I going to build my immune system? What support structure do I need for my day to day as well as in my life generally? You know, these are all wellness questions and a wellness mindset that we can start to adopt. To recognize if you are suffering from burnout and to take some steps to rectify that now and um, and for the long term and to understand really the impact that stress has on you on a physical level but also on a mental and emotional level because you know the world health organization says that stress is the epidemic of the 21st century and 9.6 million people around the world die of cancer each year much of it related to stress now that's a much higher annual death toll than we'll probably end up with from COVID, but the statistics are staggering if you think about that. So, you know, really um, prioritizing our health and our well-being and minimizing stress and the impacts of stress will really help us kind of come out on the other side of this um, feeling um, a lot better about, you know, where we are at this time. And I guess for anyone listening, you know, I guess uh, having a moment of just, um, of, of thinking to yourself, what, what have been the key takeaways for you? Um, what are you going to do to adapt a, a wellness mindset for you and, and, and your family? Um, and mm -hmm. where can you start? I always think that um, the best thing is to have a moment where you can um, take some time, make yourself a cup of tea, a hot chocolate, coffee, whatever it is that you drink, um, get out a pen and paper. And, and I mm -hmm. think starting with what you mentioned before, which is making a list and, and, and writing, um, have, having that, that line in between the middle of the paper and making a list of the things that give you energy and the things that take energy from you and and mm. having that moment of being really quite honest with yourself um, and then working out that if you are constantly putting energy out at some point you are going to be drained and, and naturally that you, you are going to be burnt out so what is it that actually gives you energy and 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 mm. how can you ensure that you are sort of doing like for like and one for one to ensure that you are balanced and that you are the you know the best version of yourself um, for, you, for your family um, and your friends um, um, but I think, you know, just as you mentioned before, adapting a wellness mindset is something that, that mm. so many of us don't do and don't put priority on. And it's always mm. until it's too late, until we are sick and then we, then we oh, now we've got to look after ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. We take it for granted that we do have our health and um, have the, the ability and the capacity to be able to do and, and live these crazy busy lives. And hopefully mm. this time of home isolation is giving lots of people um, the opportunity to, to reassess their their, their values and their beliefs and the things that really do matter to them and this is a really really important and great start so so grateful for, for the messages that you've given us today now if um people want to access your book is it um yes. available to purchase or are we still in, in the pre-sales or where, where, where are we at at the moment so the audio version is winging its way around the world as we speak so that's available to purchase via my website which is thewellnesspoet.com the printed version, you can order your copy. Um, I'm doing the final um, layout proofs this week. So hopefully we'll have the printed copies back in the next three weeks. And you can order pre-order that on my website and I will send you a copy. 
um, and it will be available online and in some bookstores as well. So the audio book um, is currently being um, uploaded to all major platforms like Audible and iTunes. Um, it's on audiobooks.com just now and also through my website, so thewellnesspoet.com. And I love that I wanted to push the audio book out there as quickly as possible because it is content that people can consume whilst they're in, um, in lockdown. They don't need to physically leave their house to go and get a copy. And in five hours, they will um, hear all the content and then hopefully start to implement the suggestions, the practical elements and the hips and hints throughout the book. Okay, well, let's get all of those links in the show show notes so as many people as possible can have access to it. So grateful for your time and um, really can't wait to chat with you again. Thanks, Chrissy. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.